Hey there, my name is Alex Campbell and this is a long promised follow-up video to my original coffee roaster video. I know it's been about two years since I posted the original video and uh, you know a lot has changed for me uh, in the last two years um, but I'd like to update everyone. Uh, I'm going to try and be posting a little bit more content to my YouTube channel. Uh, some of it will be coffee roast related but uh, a lot of it's going to be uh, general sort of making related. I've added a couple big tools to my uh, tool chest over the past while. I have a pretty big uh, CNC uh, router here uh, it's a 4 byte CNC router as well as I have a uh, pretty big laser cutter that I've added as well. But here is the uh, information about my coffee roaster. So I'm going to try and go through a little bit of detail on the decisions I made in building the roaster and then uh, a little bit of the details. So as you can see this roaster is based around the sort of classic bake around build. Uh, I have the roasting chamber right here and then uh, it's basically all stainless steel and aluminum build that roast the beans. So the overall build is a blower motor in the middle here. And in the blower motor, I'll spin this around here so you can see, it blows through a stainless steel plenum. And this is a, a plenum I basically fabbed up and it was just really the only way I could get the roaster uh, or the piping to fit in here. So as you can see, it's a little bit uh, janky the way it goes, but uh, overall it's, it's pretty nice. These are stainless steel sanitary fittings in one and a half inch that I just bought off of AliExpress. And that's pretty much the source of uh, a lot of the stainless steel fittings that you'll see on the build here. This is a 25 amp solid state relay and this is just a uh, 0 to 32 volt DC control. There are some more modern ones that, uh, that I found out there that are uh, 0 to 10 volts or 0 to 5 volts. They might be a little bit easier to control with an Arduino, but based on the code I'm using, this is actually a pretty good solution. The way I have it set up for the exhaust and the cyclone that captures all of the chaff is it basically comes off the back of the roasting chamber here. So here's where you pour the beans in, comes off the back of the roasting chamber, and then it goes through into the side of, of the cyclone. And you can see from the top that it is offset to do some swirl in there. This cyclone, I didn't really build it off of any specific plans. It was just really built uh, you know, just sort of to, to what I sort of saw online from some different dust cyclones and it works absolutely perfectly. When I'm roasting, there is zero chafe that comes out. At the bottom here, uh, this is just essentially a, a little jar I bought at the local dollar store and I just have it basically bolted on to the bottom there. If you look around the detail there, I had some little flanges uh, built when I, when I made this and there all of the stainless cutting was done on a water jet. I just hired that out and it actually you know works really well. I can hold about two pounds worth of chaff in there before I have to empty it. Around the build here I have these stainless sanitary fittings and uh, on these I actually have uh, little quick releases here and the quick releases use a silicone gasket and a little silicone gasket is uh, you know withstands the temperature of the roasting quite well so as you can see I can actually remove that so if I wanted to change that out or if I just need to clean or something I can just easily pull these off and on and uh, be able to switch things out. So the little spa blower motor I have in here was actually a pretty nice uh, solution because essentially it's just a nice strong vacuum motor. Uh, one of the advantages it has is it actually has this little silencer on the top that's built in. So it's just a you know little piece of plastic with a little bit of insulation material in there. But that sits on the intake and it actually does make a bit of a difference. Overall, the, the, the roaster is quite loud uh, when I'm roasting. However, uh, you know, this cuts down that high pitch, real annoying whining sound. So that makes a bit, a bit of a difference. In the bottom of the plenum here, uh, this is actually where it's a little bit ugly. I'm not going to take this apart. Uh, it's, it's a real bear to take this apart to sort of show you what the element looks like. I'll throw a picture of what the element looks like up on the screen. But essentially, I have the two wires that come off of the solid state relay and they come into the bottom of the roasting chamber here. I use this uh, reflective tape. Uh, a lot of people use it for, you know, putting together, you know, dust collection stuff. But a, a, a little known fact about it is it actually withstands high temperatures quite well. So you can heat it up to really high temperatures and the adhesive resists those temperatures. So it's actually a nice little thing to seal up the little air leaks that I have in the roaster. So this is inside the roasting chamber. And as you can see, the air comes through the pipe here and into the plenum. And the plenum actually has a little bit of uh, color, color change on it from the hot gases that come in here. 
Now in the bottom of the roasting chamber, and you can see there's a few coffee beans left in there. Basically this design was completely chosen arbitrarily. I just sort of like the look of it. And this cone actually tapers in at about 10 degrees. And uh, I based that on a design by uh, Roaster Dave. And this whole uh, dumping mechanism is actually uh, uh, based on this uh, this design I sort of saw online. Uh, Dave, he's actually a member on the uh, Facebook Fluid Bed Roasters forum. And he has a, a roaster. It's actually a really neat design. It's uh, under Dirty Dave Customs. And in here, basically, the sort of concept is like an intake valve or an exhaust valve on a car. So this valve is sort of a poppet style valve. It's got like a little tiny stem on the bottom of it. And really, when you're roasting, the, the pressure from the inside of the chamber pushes this down and seals it. So there's not very much air that leaks out. But then when you release the, the, the beans, I have a bit of a linkage here. The linkage is honestly overkill. I'm just going for something that, you know, looked aesthetically pleasing. I've got some little heim joints on here, you know, walnut handle. But overall, all that it does is it pushes up on the bottom and it just pushes up so that the intake valve opens and closes. Underneath here, it just basically has a little a uh, little tab that basically holds that uh, that little piece of metal in the, in the center. And I just put a baking pan underneath it. I could have done something a little bit more complicated that had uh, a turn that goes into some sort of, you know, other bin or something. But honestly, it's one of those things that once I got this going, uh, you know, in roasting beans, I'd never really found it necessary to go any further with it. Now, once again, the electronics are something that, you know, once I got them going, I honestly never found the need to go any further with them. So as you can see, it's an Arduino based system. And the only reason it has this little hat on it is to basically have a max 33875 um, thermocouple interface. So it's got a type K thermocouple interface that interfaces with the Arduino via uh, SPI port. The other little box in here, and this is uh, only necessary because I wanted to control the uh, the fan with the roaster control as well, is that this is a zero cross detector circuit. So the reason the zero cross circuit is necessary is that a solid state relay can't turn on and off unless there's a zero cross state. So that means that the AC uh, uh, frequency essentially goes uh, plus and minus so the AC goes back and forth and when you are switching a solid state relay on and off if you don't have one of those zero cross events in there it won't turn on and off and that's fine for normal things like if you just wanted to turn a light switch or something on and off but if you want to rapidly switch something like a heater or fan or in this case a blower motor that requires a, a pretty clean source um, you need to be able to turn it on and off uh, when it's crossing zero. The other thing that this zero cross detector circuit has in it is a, is a triac. And that triac is turning on and off really rapidly. So it's nice because it's a little circuit board that's essentially an all-in-one solution. So it not only has a zero cross detection, but it also has a little triac in there that turns the fan motor on and off. Uh, I could use the zero cross signal to affect the uh, roaster element as well, but the roaster element, I just turn that on and off uh, fairly fairly quickly, so you don't notice it. When I first was running it on the original Arduino firmware that comes with Roast Logger, it has about a two second uh, cycle time, so it would be turning on and off, and you'd see the lights dim in the in the whole house. Uh, so it was it was not that effective. So I I switch it a lot faster than that. I switch it about 50 times a second. So it's actually a little bit closer to a pulse width modulated uh, device versus something where you're just turning the power on and off at a low frequency. All right, so I've got it hooked up to Roast Logger here and it just hooks in basically by a USB cable. I have tried it on Bluetooth before. However, with just a Chinese Bluetooth module, I could never get it to work very effectively. So once you get it hooked up by the serial connection here, I usually go over to the uh, chart screen and as you can see over here it has all of the controls now this big one I find that the roasting is quite dependent on ambient temperature so I have haven't really spent a lot of time roasting by uh, PID but I find that the manual control is actually a little bit more fun as well as the manual control I'm able to get a lot more consistent roast so if we go over here uh, you can see the fan 
and it's hooked up right now to AC. So when I turn the fan switch up, it has pretty good control of the fan. So you can hear the fan kicking in there, and then of course I can go up to you know 50, 100% uh, fan there, which you can can't really hear me over. And with the fan, um, I found that you know really it's very rarely necessary to go over you know probably about 40, 50 percent fan. Uh, you know I'm only lofting about one pound of beans here. Um, so and as the roast goes, you actually need to step the the fan down uh, you know quite a lot throughout the roast, or else you'll just blow beans out into the exhaust and down into your cyclone. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to roast with this this thing. Uh, as I said, the PID I find you know is, is kind of uh, tricky to tune, and you know when you're roasting a pound of beans, uh, to to throw away a pound of beans every time when you get the PID settings incorrect, or to keep ramping that up and down is, is pretty tricky. So I honestly I've found over the years that roasting manually with this is is a little bit more fun and uh, is a pretty easy way to actually go about it. So uh, thanks for for joining me uh, for the technical overview. Review. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to send me a message and uh, hopefully uh, you'll stick with me and check out the roasting video.